This video is part of a series. Complete the previous videos in this playlist before you start this video. The complete playlist information, the material and the code file information is given in the video description below. NumPy stands for Numerical Python. This is one of the most important package. Whenever you are working with Python, this is a package that you may uh, get involved very frequently. NumPy is used for creating arrays. NumPy stands for Numerical Python. This is the package that will help you to work with arrays. Whenever you are working in any programming language, you have to be very comfortable with arrays. And NumPy is a package that will provide you an option to work with arrays, vectors. Vector means a one-dimensional array. Matrix means two-dimensional array. It will have rows and columns. You have multi-dimensional arrays. You can use these arrays to do mathematical operations. You, if you want to do array multiplication, matrix multiplication, you have to work with arrays. This is a foundation on which all the high-level tools and scientific Python packages are built. For example, if you are doing a machine learning, model building, and prediction later on, behind the scenes, there are so many computations that will happen. For all those computations, internally, we will be using arrays. If you have advanced mathematical computations, for us to do or perform those computations quickly, we need to use these arrays internally. So first of all, how do you define arrays and what is the function name? Can you make a guess what will be the function name if I want to define an array? What is the basic function name? First of all, I will write import numpy as np. Numpy is the package numpy as np. np is the alias. And then I will say np.array. So let us quickly define an array and try to get an understanding of how do we work with these arrays. Import numpy as np np is the alias then my array name is income income is equal to np dot array 12000 or 1200 1300 1400 1500 these are the income values that i'm storing in an array if you look at this i'm giving a list of income values does that mean income will be a list here but i'm providing all this list in which function i'm providing all of them i'm providing this input into a function called np dot array so the type of income, if you try to execute, it will be displayed as it will be an array or n dimensional array. This is right now, n is one. It is a one dimensional array or n dimensional array. Income is numpy dot. These are known as numpy arrays. What is a numpy array? A numpy array takes a list of values as input and stores them in an array. Now, how do you access the first element if I want to print 1200? Now, that is as usual Python indexing income of zero. If I say 1200 will be printed. What is the major advantage of arrays? The major advantage is the loops that we generally need to write. What are the loops that we have to write? For example, if I say that expenses is equal to, let's say, around 60% or 65% of the income. Let's say if I say 65% of 1200, that will be expenses. 65% of uh, 1300, that will be expenses. If that is the case, I have to go to each and every value of income, multiply with that number to get expenses. But however, if you have an array, you can directly say my expenses is equal to income into whatever is the factor that I'm writing. So by writing it so, instead of writing a for loop, it will go to each and every element and then multiply instead of doing it one by one within one shot. What this, app, what this particular command is going to do, it is going to multiply each and every element in this array by this number. Each and element of this array will be multiplied by this number and expenses will be created. This is what is expenses. This is one of the biggest advantage of array. You don't need to do it element wise operation. Once you do it, the overall operation automatically it will happen on element wise. Now income is an array, expenses is an array. Both of them have the same size. You can say, you can create a new array called savings. Savings is equal to income minus expenses. So income minus expenses, these are my savings. These are the saving values. So this is income array. This is expenses array. Savings is also an array. These are all the arrays. I have just introduced what are arrays to you. We are going to go very much in depth into these arrays. Array. It looks like a list. It's not exactly a list. Array takes as a list as the input and stores in a different data type or different format called array. 
let me now explain you the major difference between list and an array because they look the same but they are not the same so let me define here this is a very important point please pay attention let me define two lists list one is equal to a simple one two three list two is four five six these are the two lists a list is simply a collection of elements array is also a collection of elements but they are meant for mathematical operations arrays are meant for shape reshaping arrays are meant for doing or storing the data in the form of vectors and matrices and doing mathematical calculations later on but list is simple collection only i have defined list one and list two i am also defining array one and array two if you look at them if you try to print those if i print if i try to print list one and if i also try to print array one they look almost the same look at that list one array one they look the same it doesn't mean that both of them will be doing the same operations for example list one is a collection of three elements list two is a collection of three elements what will happen if i create list one plus list two what is the output can you make a guess what will be the output if i write list one plus list two one two three four five six because at the end of the day list is a collection only does it do any mathematical operations does it understand no. No. this is a plus sign i must add this element with this element does it do that no what it will do collection of three plus collection of three six elements so let me call that as list three so if you try to print list three if i try to print list three what will be the output one two three four five six but is this the mathematical operation that we are looking for when i want to add no. two arrays this is not the output let us suppose if I want to add really those two arrays, if I say array three is equal to array one plus array two. So what is the expected output here? Five, seven, and nine. So this will be adding this element with this element, this element with this element. So corresponding elements will be added. Once you add the corresponding elements, the result is five, seven, nine. Is that a glaringly visible difference between list and an array? A list is a simple collection of elements. A list is not meant for mathematical operations. Array is meant for mathematical operation. For plus, a plus sign here indicates that you are doing a mathematical operation of addition. A plus sign, is it an addition in the list? No, it is just a collection of these two elements. So this is one of the biggest difference between list and array. You don't really use list for mathematical operations. You just use it for collection of elements. Two, three elements put together, you want to store them in a list. That is point one. Another major difference is elements inside a list, they can be heterogeneous. They need not be homogeneous. For example, if I write list four, if I write list four is equal to, let's say first one is a number, second one is a string, third one is a again an integer. Okay. Fourth one I can also put, okay, let me keep it simple. I'll put another uh, string. Okay. Sure. If I try to print list four, it works fine. If I try to print, if I try to access only the first element of the list, what is the first element list four zero? List four is the one. So if I try to see the type of it, can you make a guess what is the type of this element? What is the type of this? What is the expected output? If I take only the first one, is it numeric or not? Yes. It yeah, is. it will be a numeric value. It is showing as none type, but it is a number. If I want to multiply it, let us suppose if I try to take that number list four, and then if I try to multiply it as four, it is giving me eight. Can I believe that it is still stored as two only? But if I try to repeat the same with an array, if I try to repeat the same with one array, Now this, I would like to store it as an array. This I would say array four and then array four, if I try to print it. Now when I am storing it, there is one extra command that I have to write. What is it? NP dot array. Otherwise that will be a list only, isn't it? NP dot array. Now this is a proper array that I'm defining. Now what is the difference that you have observed? What is the difference? Do you see these extra quotes? 
if you see the codes, what does that indicate to you? Like if I write this kind of operation on my array right now, do you think it's going to work if I say array 4 and 0? If I say array 4, 0, the output is 2. Now, can I do this? Is that going to work? What is happening here? Look at this. Here, the first element is 2. Multiply it's it with 4. Two. Multiply it with 4. You should get 8. But why am I getting multiply it with 4 is 4 times 2? Because here 2 is right as what? The output of list 2, it is still a numeric value. But the output of array, what is this 2? It is a string. And string when you value. multiply string 4 times, it is giving you 4 times 2. Are you getting it? Array allows only homogeneous elements. So here you have numeric string, numeric string. All the numeric have been converted to strings. Everything is string. Array allows you either all numbers only or all strings only. Even if you have one string in between, that will be considered as string only. The whole array will be considered as string. So array allows you homogeneous values only. Homogeneous means what? One type only. Either you have all same numbers, value. same types. Either you have all numbers or you have all strings. That's it. Whereas a list is mixed. You can have any type. You can have numbers. You can have strings. You can have any type. The major point that I want to make here is since you have string here, automatically this will two will be considered as string. Automatically, everything that you're doing on top of it, all the operations will be considered as string operations. Make a side note here in array, everything is taken as homogeneous. What do you mean by homogeneous? If you have a string, everything will be considered as a string. Are you with me? In array, either you can store all numbers or you can store only strings. In array, okay. every element is homogeneous. Let me first complete the previous question. Are you with me, all of you? Yes. Say sir. that again. In array, every element has to be homogeneous. That means if you have a string, automatically, even though you have given it as a numeric value, it will be stored as a string. The proof is here. What is this two here? That is numeric. But when you print an array, what do you see the two in quotes? Have we given in quotes? We haven't. But still, it has been taken as quotes because it has automatically converted into homogeneous manner. So it has found that March is a string. So this whole array will be considering strings only. Everything will be taken as string only. That is the automatic conversion the array will do. So you cannot have an array which is having half of the elements which are numbers, half of the elements which are strings. You cannot have them. If you want or if there is any such requirement, you may have to keep that data in two different arrays. Internally, the way arrays are defined, internally, the way arrays are going to work, they expect us to give homogeneous elements or if we don't give, they themselves are going to convert everything into homogeneous manner. So what is one dimensional array? One dim array is array of one, two, three. This is a one dimensional array. Let me name it as A. A is a one dimensional array. Now you can also define two dimensional array. Two dimensional arrays are also known as matrices. So B is equal to NP dot array. This is the first row. If you want to give the second row, you put comma and you also give the second row, which is like four, five, six, or let's say two, three, five, two, four, six. So it is expecting us to give Field elements must be two or three doubles got two. So here, this is one list. This is another list. All of this together need to be passed on. So we have to put again, we have to wrap it inside a list. So let us wrap it inside a list and then give it. So you see, this is a two dimensional array. So this is the first row, four, five, six. This is the second row, two, four, six. If I want to add the third row, only thing that I need to do is again, add one another array. Let's say nine comma nine comma eight. We cannot type this in one single row. We, I think just for the sake of our uh, easy to read process, I am keeping it. Otherwise, you can uh, type it in a single row as well. So this is also fine. This will also work. So it will be a 4, 5, 6, 2, 4, 6, 9, 9, 8. It is a two-dimensional array with three rows and three columns, three cross three matrix. You can do it that way or you can do it this way also. Both of them will work. Okay. Yes. Why is it called a two-dimensional array, not three-dimensional array if it has three rows? Yeah. Think about it. In a matrix, how many rows can be there? So what is like dimensions are how many? There are rows in it. 
there are columns in it, isn't it? There is no other dimension. Let us suppose if you have a, a mat matrix is known as two dimensional array. You're aware of that. So what is one dimensional array? There is only one dimension of values. Okay. This is also known as vector. And the number of elements in the vector, whether you have uh, two elements, whether you have three elements, whether you have 30 elements, whether you have three million elements, okay, or 3000 elements, that is still called as one dimensional array only. Do you agree? If I am defining a list, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on, even if I have 30,000, even if I have 30 million, how many elements are there? This is known as one dimensional array. Do you agree? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Makes sense, isn't it? Now, what is a two-dimensional array? It will have rows and columns. So let me take two rows or let me take one row only. Or let's say if I have two rows, which is having, and if I'm having two columns, so one, two, three, four, this is a matrix. Dimension one is rows, dimension two is columns. Can I have one more row? Possible. Can I have two more rows? I can have any number of rows, yes or no? I can have 30 rows, 30,000 rows, 3 million rows. I can have any number of columns. 30 columns, 3 million columns, all this. No matter how many rows are there, how many columns are there, this is still two-dimensional array only. Can you tell me what are the dimensions? Dimension 1 is what? Rows. Dimension 1 is known as rows. Dimension 2 is known as what? What do you have in dimension 2? What are these called? Columns. Rows and? Rows. Col columns. Now, if I have three dimensions or four dimensions or five dimensions, like I mean to say three rows or four rows or five rows, I will not be calling them as, let's say, if I have one million rows, I will not be calling it as a one million dimensional array. This is still two dimensional array only. Does that make sense? At the end of the day, this is a matrix with some rows and some columns. At the end of the day, matrix is a matrix is a two, two dimensional, dimensional array. Matrix is a two-dimensional array. That's the reason why, even though, like, even though if you have four rows like this, whether you have two rows or whether you have four rows, it is still called as a two-dimensional array. This is a array of size four cross three. Matrix of size four cross three. Four is the number of elements in the first dimension, which is rows. Three is the number of elements in the second dimension, which is the columns. You can get to know, let us suppose somewhere somebody has defined an array. If you want to know the number of dimensions or if you want to know how many rows are there, how many columns are there, you can use something called shape. Let us suppose I have stored everything in B. I can say B dot shape will give me how many rows are there, how many columns are there. So when I said B dot shape, I got four comma three. Can you tell me what is the meaning of this? Four rows and three columns. There are four rows and three columns. For example, if I try to do some experiment and I have defined this array, this is a multi-dimensional array, which I have defined, which has apparently two dimensions. B has been defined. If I say B dot shape, I got seven comma three. What is the meaning of this? Seven rows, three columns. So B is a matrix or a two-dimensional array. It has seven rows and three columns in it. Got it? Now, there is another operation called size. You can also, this is the shape. If I say B dot size, based on the output, you explain me what exactly size is telling me. What is size? Total elements in the matrix. Row into columns. Row into columns. How many elements are there in the matrix? So if I say A dot size, it gives me three. What does that mean? How many yeah. elements are there in the array A? Three. Three A. elements are there. B dot size is giving me. I'm not sure whether people use size often because once you have the shape, you don't need to get an idea on the size. Can you get an idea using the shape itself? If you have a matrix of seven cross three, you can always think that seven into three, 21 elements are there, isn't it? You don't really particularly need to get the size. Okay. But there is a ready-made option also. There is one more option called B dot N dim. If you say B dot N dim, it says two. What is it trying to tell us? It is two dimensional. So this is a two dimensional one. So if you t see the shape, automatically you will get an idea on the size and end dim. Is that a right statement? So what yes. is end dim? Yes, Number of dimensions? Number of dimensions. Dimension. So this uh, array B 
has two dimensions what are the two dimensions rows and columns, and columns. Mm -hmm. so the reason why i am saying you don't need this size you don't need this and dim anymore is that a right statement now yes. without size tell me what is the size of this b 21. 7 into 3, 21. 7 into 3. That's how you do it. So, what is the formula for it? Size, if you want to get without any size option, you will say 7 into 3. Now, without size, if you want to, without end dim, if you want to know the end dim, is this visible? End dim, is it visible? Yeah. 1 and That's 2. Good. Isn't it? So, yeah. either you can use the end dim or just look at the shape without any confusion simply if somebody asks you overall how many elements are there you can tell that if somebody asks you overall how many dimensions are there you can tell that you don't really need uh, separate functions for you to find out how many dimensions are there or how many elements are there continue with the next video in the playlist we are covering everything step by step if you have any questions or the comments please post them in the comments window below